everyone, I'm Chef Vivian Cunha, and today well, I'm here in the Pier Room at Lazy Acres Natural Market. I'm, I'm glad to teach you a class today on making an amazing vegetarian meatloaf. So we're going to do a plant-based vegetarian meatloaf, full of protein and very, very delicious. So all the ingredients today for our class, you can scroll up on top of the comments. The ingredients are listed right there. But let's go slowly and I'll introduce the ingredients for you. So we're going to need two cans of organic garbanzo beans, which has been drained and rinsed. We need one zucchini, two cups of shiitake mushrooms. We're going to need six eggs total. And five of them, I have boiled them, boiled eggs for 10 minutes, 12 minutes and one is raw. We need one cup of panko, which is Japanese breadcrumbs, a little lighter breadcrumbs. We're going to be using one pound of uh, ground plant-based meat. And this one here, I like this company, Beyond Beef. You can find this in the freezer in our store. The spices I'm going to be, use, be using today is smoked paprika, a little bit of chili flakes optional, garlic powder, and cumin, and salt and pepper to taste. I'm also going to be using fresh herbs. I have fresh thyme here, and I'm I'll be using some parsley. Also, I pre um, about uh, four carrots. I slice them in half, and I cook them for, for about four to five minutes and drain them, so we can do that in advance. And we're gonna be using olive oil. This is great, it's from the store, store brand olive oil. And I'm gonna be using also four sweet onions from the store. So this is our, our, our ingredients, so let's start. First, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna roast the shiitake mushrooms with the garbanzo beans. So I have a lined cooking sheet. We're gonna need, be needing two of those. So start now, one is to bake the meatloaf and one is to do the, to roast the garbanzo and the shiitake mushroom. So here I have the shiitake mushrooms. What I'm, what I, today we're not gonna be washing the shiitake mushrooms with water, running water. But we have a wet paper towel and we're just gonna wash the shiitake mushrooms just like that. Why I'm doing that? Because I want to roast the shiitake mushrooms and I don't want them to absorb water. I want them to add a crunchiness to our, to set our meatloaf. So with a wet paper towel, you just wipe them, wipe them dry like that. And when you're doing a sauce, when you're doing something that you want the mushrooms to retain their flavor, that's what you do. Now, if you're making a soup or something like that, then you can rinse the mushrooms. But for sauces, for, for your mushrooms to be crispy when you want to saute them, and you want them crispy and not mushy, that's what you got to do. You got to clean one by one with a wet paper towel. It's fast. So, I'm going to put this away. And here we have our mushrooms. And here we have our garbanzo. So I'm going to put our garbanzo beans in the cooking sheet already. And then I'm going to roughly chop our mushrooms. I'm going to remove a little bit of the stem, just a little bit. You don't have to remove a lot. I'm going to keep some and remove some. Just if it's a, it's a little brown, then you want to remove it. And shiitake mushrooms, they have an amazing smoky flavor. So it's going to add a smoky flavor to our meatloaf. Shiitake mushrooms are very, very delicious. Whatever you want to add, delicious for risottos as well. When you add, if you mix all the mushrooms and you add a little bit of the shiitake, they add a beautiful smokiness. So I'm just going to roughly chop the mushrooms just like that. Doesn't have to be perfect. I just want, because we after we roast them, I'm gonna pulse them in a, in a food processor. So 
we just want them to be a little bit roughly chopped so they cook faster and our oven has to be preheated for 400 degrees please do that 400 degrees and we're going to roast this mixture for about 30 to 40 minutes so i roughly chop my mushrooms a little bit more just with your hand like that and just just like that then i have our garbanzo beans that are already placed in the cooking sheet and we're gonna add our mushrooms to the same tray. Make sure you get them all. And here you have, and then we're gonna add some extra virgin olive oil, about two tablespoons. I'm just gonna drizzle like that. And salt and pepper. Fresh ground pepper. and some Himalayan sea salt. I like Himalayan sea salt, that's my favorite. For cooking, for roasting, that's the one I use. So I'm gonna toss it, this a little bit in the cooking sheet, just like that. And our oven has been preheated for 400 degrees. So we're gonna spread it all over the cooking sheet and then we're gonna place in the oven at 400 degrees for about 30 to 40 minutes, depending on your oven. And they're gonna be dry, a little bit crunchier. Ta-da! Now, obviously we didn't have 40 minutes to wait for our garbanzo beans to be ready. So I pre-baked for you, for you to see how it looks like. And this is what it looks like when it's roasted for about 40 minutes. So the garbanzo beans become a little crunchy and uh, the mushrooms shrink. So I'm gonna place this mixture here and we're gonna need a food processor, which I have it right here. And we're gonna place this mixture inside the food processor. We're gonna pulse it. So we have it here. If you don't have a food processor in the house, you can chop that by hand. And you can chop that by hand. Don't use the blender because it's gonna be too mushy. So just, I'm not gonna make a puree out of this. I just want it to be chunky. So if you don't have a food processor at home, please chop by hand. So I'm gonna close it, and we're gonna pulse about four or five times. One, whoops. Sometimes when that happens, it's because the blade is not all the way down. Right, not all the way down. Now, it's not. So this is what happens. I'm gonna take it apart and make sure the blade is nicely on down, uh, pressed down. Now it's perfect. One, two, three, four, five. That's all I need. So it's a little bit crunchy. It's not as pureed. Maybe I'm gonna give one more pulse. One, two, three. That's about perfect. So the consistency is not powdery, it's not, it's not a powder, but it's a little bit chunky. I, I'm sure you guys can see it here in this camera. And I'm gonna place this mixture inside a large bowl. I have a large bowl here, and I'm going to place my beautiful garbanzo and shiitake mushroom mixture in here. Now, in the same bowl, we're going to add all the other ingredients so we don't have to make anything dirty than necessary. So, I have a zucchini here, and I have a vegetable shredder, and I'm going to shred the zucchini right in the bowl, just like that. Why I'm adding zucchini to my meatloaf? 
because you make your meatloaf nice and moist inside and crunchy on the outside. And you're adding a vegetable. So we have, we have mushrooms, we have zucchini, we have carrots inside. So it's a nice plant-based meatloaf. So I'm just going to shred the, the zucchini right inside. And, zu and zucchini has a lot of water. It's a vegetable that has a lot of water. So it makes the meatloaf moist, nice and moist. Be careful towards the end. And make sure you get all the vegetable out and be very careful. Next ingredient, I'm going to place the egg inside. One raw egg. One raw egg. And then I'm going to add our plant-based ground beef. I use Beyond Beef. It's my favorite. And we can found here in the store in the freezer, in the freezer department. They also have sausages. They have all kinds of products. I really like the flavor of this. And what is um, plant-based ground beef? It's made with monk beans, monk bean protein and pea protein and brown rice. So it's all plant-based ground protein. What else I'm gonna do here? The panko, I'm gonna add the panko. And that's about it. So I'm gonna use some gloves to to mix this around and I'm going to show you how I'm going to finish this up. So we're going to need another cooking sheet lined with the parchment paper. So I, read, I have that already done. And um, if you don't have gloves, by all means, don't use gloves. It's okay. It's all right. Let's not forget our spices as well. I'm using one teaspoon of cumin, ground cumin. I'm using smoked paprika, one teaspoon as well. Of course, at home you, you can measure with a teaspoon. And um, garlic powder, I'm gonna have one teaspoon of that as well. Optional, you can have red chili flakes if you wanna make it spicy. If you don't, it's completely optional. I'm making spicy because I like spicy and salt let's add some salt salt and pepper i always say season to taste i'm going to be using about half a teaspoon of, of himalayan sea salt to my meatloaf some fresh ground pepper and i'm going to take some olive oil and i'm going to i'm going to put in the bottom of my meatloaf and I'm going to spread it around so the meatloaf doesn't stick after it's ready. So I'm just going to go like that. And now with your hands, let's blend all this together. Let's blend all this together. Smells very good. I guess the technique is the same as making with regular animal protein, but here, we are, we are making with this beautiful ground plant-based protein. And this is fantastic. You can do it and you can freeze it. And um, I know it's a large meatloaf, but you can also freeze it and you feed about six, six people a, a big meatloaf like that. So look how pretty it looks. I'm just gonna make sure it's nice and mix well together and once you have the mixture well combined this is what we're going to do we're going to take the mix mixture and place it on the cooking sheet just like that we're going to remove the bowl and then we're going to spread it like that make sure you guys see that Spread it. I'm going to make my meatloaf large and long. So we're going to press it down. We're just going to mold it. The kids can help. Just like doing play, play dough, play, playing with play dough. So 
And then I boiled about five eggs. Remember the recipe called for six? In the beginning I introduced, this, I have five boiled eggs and I have about four carrots that have been cooked in boiling water for about four to five minutes. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put the carrots just like that on, and the eggs are gonna go on top. Beautiful. And I place the eggs long ways like this and some more carrots on top and then we're gonna fold it and make a meatloaf this part is kind of tricky so let's do one size at a time first we do this side trying to make the carrots go all the way around the egg it takes some stubbornness but I want to do it so we're just gonna close the meat loaf like that and make sure it covers everything eggs some more carrots here Just gonna play with play-doh and we're gonna close this meatloaf. Put it aside. Just take this side and close it. Just spread it around. And then the oven. We kept the oven on at 400 degrees. We're gonna bake this meatloaf about 45 minutes at 400. And, uh, and then while this is baking, we're gonna do our caramelized onions. We have four onions that we're gonna caramelize and serve this beautiful meatloaf with the onions. So look how pretty this looks. Nice and big. This is a perfect holiday dish to make. And serve with a salad. You can serve with mash with uh, mashed potatoes. I like to serve with a salad. Look how pretty it looks. So beautiful. I have molded already. Now I'm gonna pop this in the oven for about 45 minutes at 400. Perfect. Wasn't that easy? Isn't that a fast meatloaf to make? That's very simple. And now let's uh, do our onions. We're gonna need a large saute pan, just like that. A large saute pan. We're gonna need the, the thyme, fresh herbs, thyme, olive oil, and four large sweet onions. And salt and pepper to taste. So this is our, our ingredients. So let's add some olive oil to the saute pan about two tablespoons and let's start chopping our onions if you have a problem crying you can put your reading glasses or you can wet the, the knife if you're close to a sink you can keep wetting your knife all the time so that prevents a little bit of the crying some people are more sensitive than others to the to the to the onion but sweet onions, I prefer sweet onions because if you have a tendency to cry, the red onions and sweet onions are the onions that, you, that are gonna be better for you if you're sensitive to onions. So I'm just gonna peel the outside. Then I'm gonna uh, thinly slice these onions and I'm gonna caramelize them. I'm gonna saute in olive oil for about 
15 to 20 minutes. And the onions are gonna have this beautiful brown caramel caramelized color. And you can do that, and onions like that will last for five days in the fridge. And you can use for other things too. You can make sandwiches out of it. You can add to a lot of things. Caramelized onions are delicious. It's just like candy. And I, I'm, you might think, oh, you have four onions? Yes, because when you, when you cook the onions, they reduce. It's just like mushrooms, they reduce. And for a big, large onions like that, you'll be not so much in a pan after, because they shrink. So one more. What else can I use um, for caramelized onions? Um, you can make, you can toss in pastas. You can eat with fish, on top of fish. I like that too. You can make a cream sauce, add some, some cream, make a cashew cream and add the caramelized onions to it. There is a lot of things you can create, you can improvise in your kitchen when you have caramelized onions ready to go. So, and plus when you're doing this, the house smells so good. The house smells delicious. The beautiful aroma of the caramelized onions. So I'm gonna, I, I cut the onions in half like you, like you saw here, I, I peeled them. So I'm gonna cut them in half like that and I'm gonna thinly slice them sideways like that. And that's what we're gonna do. Always make sure your hands uh, like a little spider so you don't cut them. I'm gonna turn on my heat at medium high. In the beginning, you don't caramelize onions on low heat. You caramelize, you, you caramelize them in high heat. So I'm just slicing them. And, and you can start adding them to the pan. Delicious. One thing that is delicious either, that I love, one of my favorite dishes, is to make a sweet potato puree, like you, you cook the sweet potatoes, you roast them, and then you mash them, so to make a puree, and then you add the caramelized onions to the sweet potato puree. Boy, that's delicious. I love that. So I'm encouraging you to always have the, this ready to go. And you can even freeze it. If you freeze the caramelized onions, you can always have it for later use. So. One more. When you're cooking the meatloaf, you can slice them into, into pieces, and leftovers can be frozen, and you last for a couple months in the freezer. So when you're hungry, when you're lazy, just take a piece out and defrost it in the microwave, and here you have a meal with a salad, with a bowl of soup, a meal that is loaded, it's low in fat and loaded with protein healthy protein. Garbanzo beans have a lot of protein. One cup of garbanzo beans have 18 to 19 grams of protein. So garbanzo, and a lot of people that have bean uh, legume intolerance, they can, that doesn't happen with garbanzo beans. For some reason, a lot of, of my clients that have uh, legume intolerance, garbanzo beans, they don't have a problem with it. And garbanzo beans, hummus is made out of garbanzo beans. Garbanzo is a perfect protein that I always have it handy in my house. So I'm almost finished with the onion. No tears, no tears. So I have about two tablespoons of olive oil in there. I'm gonna add some Himalayan sea salt. I'm gonna add some black pepper. 
And you can add a lot or you can add a little as your preference. And then you have the fresh herbs. I have some thyme here, which is an amazing herb. This is lemon thyme. It has a really good smell. And I'm just going to remove the leaves from the stem. It's very tedious to do that. So I tend to remove the, the thicker stems. And the skinny ones, I just leave it. They're not going to hurt you. They're so skinny. So this one, for example, when it's skinny like that, I just chop it all together. But when, when the stem is really thick, then I remove it. When you buy uh, dry herbs, they definitely have the stems there. So that's good enough. I'm just going to remove this one. And I'm going to roughly chop this thyme, just like that. Take this one out. It's about four, three, three tablespoons here of fresh thyme. It smells delicious when you're chopping it. A lot of people only use thyme on Thanksgiving time to make stuffing or to make, to put in, you know, to do things like that. But thyme is a, a, ver a very versatile spice herb that I love to use. So as you can see, I have in high heat and I have the onions here. And um, I'm going to add one more tablespoon of olive oil. I'm going to drizzle. And then I'm going to add the fresh herbs to the pan. The fresh thyme that I just chopped. I have about three tablespoons here of fresh thyme. And I'm going to stir it around and let this beautiful mixture look at that. Now, we're going to let this cook, stirring once in a while for about 15 to 20 minutes. And after that time, I pre-made a batch so you guys can see, so we don't have to wait around. I will show you now how it looks like after 20 minutes. This is what it looks like after 20 minutes. So I have the camera here. This is how it looks when we, when we start. And this is how it looks when we are finished. So you have this beautiful brown caramelization to the onion. And it's delicious. And it takes about 20 minutes to get here, from here to here. Cool? All right, so we have that. I'm going to move my fire that way. And the meatloaf, I pre-bake one too, because it takes 45 minutes, so we d I didn't want to, you folks to wait. So let me show you how the meatloaf looks like. Look how pretty. Look how amazing this meatloaf looks. Very hearty. It holds the shape. And we're going to plate the meatloaf with the caramelized onions. I'm going to slice it and show you guys how it looks. So for a little bit, I'm going to chop some fresh parsley because it's going to be our garnish for our dish. So let me get some fresh parsley here. I'm just going to roughly chop. This is a very, how do you call it, very, when you, when you miss home, when, you, when you're feeling like you want mama's food, how do you call that? There is a, there is a, a term for it. You're feeling homesick, that's the kind of dish that you, call for food, call for food. <laughs> This is a delicious comfort food. That's what it is. So I have it here. Now, I'm going to cut it and show you guys how it looks like. Let me cut right in the middle. And I'm going to cut a slice. And I'm going to serve in a plate. But I just want to show you both how it looks like. this amazing meatloaf. So look how pretty it looks like. You have the egg, you have the vegetables, and I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take a plate, 
and I'm gonna show you guys how it looks like plated. So here we have a plate. We put our meat loaf. We get some caramelized onions, delicious. Right on top. Can be served with mashed potatoes, sweet potatoes. And then we have some fresh herbs. And yum yum, a high protein meatloaf, plant based, looks great. You can freeze it. It serves this this whole dish serves about six people. Hope you guys enjoyed it. To learn this easy vegetarian plant based meatloaf. Thanks for joining me. I'm Chef Vivian Cunha. If you make this dish, post your photo on Instagram so I can see. I can see how your meatloaf is. I love to see the photos when you guys post photos. And this will also be a feature on our YouTube channel. So we have our YouTube channel. Please subscribe so you can have, you can have all the recipes there. And um, I hope to see you soon. I'm Chef Vivian Cunha.